with that 19 inch neck, 230 pounds, and a 5'11 frame. Tyson showing he definitely has a strong chin. Remember, Tyson has not been able to land one straight right hand yet. It's still there waiting. Still there waiting. Let's bring in Harold Letterman to see how he has to fight this for All I gave, Fred, all I gave was to, to Mike Tyson was round one. I mean, four, one, one even, 58, 55, Lennox Lewis. Eddie Cotton just warned Lennox Lewis for using an elbow, but, or a forearm, but in any case, Lennox Lewis is champion to death. Uh, a word about that round four. The judges can't call it 10-8 because Cotton said no knockdown, so it becomes 10-9. Since he took away a point from Lennox, it becomes 9-9, which is why I have, you know, one round even in this fight. So 58-55, Lewis. All you have to know is that so far, it's all Lewis. Now, Fran, you're getting a little experience on how they work in the big time. <laughs> it's jab, jab, and the referee moves in. Now, it doesn't seem like there's anything on Tyson's left hand anymore. The referee, no matter how many times he pushed him away, he just doesn't have the power now. Lewis clearly the aggressor inside the ring. Using his 250-pound body to exert force on Tyson. Get out, get out. Come on, get out. Nobody would have given Tyson this much credit to just stay in there, no matter if the fight is not going his way. He stayed in there, so that's a lot more than we expected from Tyson. Come on. He's staying in there. He's bleeding. He's bringing the fight to Lewis. He hasn't backed away at all. He can't take too many more of those right hands. Lewis keeps that up. That fight is gone. Lewis sizing up Tyson. This is by far the worst beating Mike Tyson has ever taken. It's batting practice for Lennox Lewis now. One fastball after another. He hits him and then still leans on him. I don't know why. I wonder what all those people who think of Tyson as the Tyson of 10 and 12 years ago are thinking now as they watch him absorb this punishment almost without any return. They tune in for a fight and they're That's getting one. Man. This no, guy's not me. quitting, he's not listen doing anything. No. No. no, you Cuts understand? Listen to me. You're Cuts fighting for the heavyweight championship of war again. Uh, you understand? The not many people can do that. You understand? Now look. I'm not going to sit out there and just let you do this. You understand? You have to throw your punches. You understand? For God's sake, you have two hands. You understand? Just let your hands go. Yes, you can. No, let your hands go. Listen, listen, right? I want your hands to move. You done took this guy's best shot. This and guy got nothing yours. for you. The guy you took his best shot. This guy's getting tired. It's time for you to go to work, brother. Come on, man. Go to work. You take his best shot. George, you call it batting practice. That's what it is. And this is the time maybe your corner should come in and rescue your fighter. It's not going to get any better for him. I have an old warrior that's taking a beating like that. And he doesn't show me anything this round. I'm going to throw the towel in myself. I'm going to keep him on the stool. Batting practice numbers that Barry Bonds will be impressed with. 31 of 46 for Lennox Lewis and around 7, 67% Tyson. Landing just four punches, throwing only 17. Tyson told his corner he'd had enough. I believe, George, you're right. He might have been looking to end the fight on his stool. He, he seems virtually useless for now, just taking punishment, maybe looking and hoping to bait Lewis into one punch. Yeah, I would give him the alternative. Look, Tyson, you put up this round or I'm going to stop the fight. I'm not just going to let your brains get beaten out doing nothing. Mike Tyson's stock is falling faster than Enron. Oh, big good right hand out. by Mike Tyson. If you don't finish your guy off, that's what you can expect. You're not doing anything to him, so he'll do something to you. There's another good right hand. 
Then that means he's aiming to come back on that right hand on top. Tyson knows he needs a knockout to win. He's never had a knockout past the seventh round. Lewis, Lewis, triple Mike Tyson with a big uppercut, and Eddie Cotton separates the fighter. Five, He's called it a six, knockdown, seven, thinking eight, that Tyson's eight, knee to to touched the canvas. Right, I I'm not sure I saw that. I don't think I did either, Larry. Lewis, unloaded. Lewis trying to finish off Mike Tyson with one minute left in the eighth round. Mike Tyson highly motivated to come into this fight, hoping that this fight would redeem his, not only his career, but his whole life. Oh, he's doing a good job. He's got heart. Now, he's you can't take that from him. Big right hand from Lewis, and Tyson goes down for the third time in his career. Lennox Lewis cements his legacy as one of the best heavyweight champions of this era. Nobody should be able, there's no one in the world can take that from Lennox Lewis now. He is no doubt the best heavyweight of all time. What he's done clearly puts him on top of the heap. He fought a virtually perfect fight, George. There's no doubt about he it. Can, he did everything. He controlled right. it from the beginning. He was patient. He never let Tyson get off. Tyson looked old and slow. And, and you know, George, when you look back at history, at fighters like Tyson from Dempsey to Marciano to Fraser, all of those fighters retired at the age of 32, and they were near the end of the rope at the age of 30. This type of fighter has to put so much effort into fighting the way he does that it's hard to sustain it. Where the boxer punchers like Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali. Even Lennox Lewis. And Lennox Lewis and Larry Holmes all were able to fight closer to their mid-30s. It doesn't require that kind of maniacal conditioning to fight that fight. And we just saw a masterpiece of a boxer puncher in Lennox Lewis tonight. All I can say is, that's right. Larry, here's the first knockdown. The knees clearly don't touch the ground. Yeah. Seems to me Eddie Cotton did his best to make this a more even fight than it was. But Lennox Lewis made it an uneven fight. And when you got the power and the reach, oh, there's a knockout it. right on the chin. But that was just the coup de gras. It had been preceded by a tremendous amount of punishment. George, you talked about power. How's this? 15 of 19 power shots for Lennox Lewis, 79% in the eighth and final round. I'm telling you, this guy, he's a smooth operator and powerful operator. What can you say but one, two, three, and all that? Lennox Lewis wanted this fight to prove that he was the best heavyweight of the 90s. This, in effect, was the, was the last big fight of the 20th century. Let's send it into the ring now for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight here in Memphis, Tennessee, the legacy of a three-time heavyweight champion has been embraced as the referee reaches the count of 10. At two minutes, 25 seconds of round number eight, the winner by knockout victory, and still the undisputed Heavyweight champion of the world, the pride of Great Britain, Lennox Lewis. So the boxing match itself was anticlimactic. 
an execution rather than an explosion. And by Monday, water cooler talk would center not so much on the details of Lewis's demolition of an outclassed opponent as on the bizarre post-fight interview conducted by both fighters in the ring with Jim Gray. Mike, have you changed your opinion now of Lennox Lewis? Well, no. Um, believe it or not, I've known Lennox for like 15, 16 years. We've always been friends, but in, comp but in competition, we, in competition, in competition, the best man has to win. We have to do everything we can. I'm happy for him to give me a fight. The payday was wonderful. I really appreciate it. And if you could be kind enough, I'd love to do it again. I think I could beat you if we try one more time. Mike, what gives you any indication that you could beat him after this performance? And was it a lack of quality opponents going into this uh, well, I, that hurt you? I, I explained before I needed two more fights or three more fights to fight him. But um, I believe if I would have took that route, the fight probably would have never happened. He wouldn't have waited for me. And again, he was just splendid, a masterful boxer. I just take my hand off to you. And yes, please, if you can do, give me one more chance, I'd be greatly appreciative. Are you interested in that at all, based on the way you, you yeah, controlled this fight? You know, I just wanted to complete my legacy. You know, everybody was saying that, you know, this fight is going to uh, count on my legacy. So I just wanted to prove to the people that, you know, I'm the best fighter in the world, on the planet. No guy tests this month. You prove that right now. You were quite annoyed. You had some very derogatory things to say about Mike coming into this fight. You said you had to win this fight to clean up boxing. Do you feel you've accomplished that? Well, I just showed, I showed boxing, you know, who's the best in the world. I went out there and showed them I'm a pugilist specialist. I can adapt to any style. And, you know, he showed me one style that a lot of people didn't think I was going to be able to deal with. But I was able to deal with it. Uh, a lot of people thought he was going to get away from my job, but nobody gets away from my job. Mike, you behave tonight. Everybody. His biggest fan is brother. Manny Stewart, say that again. I was telling Mike, I'm still one of his biggest fans. He's given me so many thrills, man. You know, go back to Roderick Moore, you remember? My friend Roderick. Mike, you've given all of us a lot of excitement. Most thank you. In the last 50 years. Thank you very much. I just, it was just beautiful. I'm just so happy you gave me a chance. Nobody wanted to give me a chance. Don King didn't want to give me a chance. I'm just happy someone gave me a chance. Thank you. The champ and Mike, how sorry are you guys that this fight did not occur many years ago when you were at your best and probably you weren't quite as old either? Well, you know, the funny thing about that is, you know, heavyweights, heavyweights mature at different different times. I would say Mike Tyson matured at 19. He was, nothing was standing in his way at that time. He ruled, he ruled the planet at that time. But I'm like fine wine. I come along later on and, you know, I learned my, my art and w I went along and just took my time. And I came along and just ruled, I'm, I'm ruling now. Mike, are you sorry this fight didn't take place years ago? It wasn't meant to be. I've known Lennox ever since he was 16, 15 years old. I have mad respect. Everything I said was in um, proposition for promoting the fight. He knows I love him and his mother, and I know for, if he thinks I don't have respect and don't love him, he's crazy. So you're saying a lot of the behavior, Mike, is certain, just to sell tickets, and, and that doesn't represent well, your true feelings? Well, he knows who I am, and, and he knows I'm not disrespectful. I, I respect this man as a brother. He knew me ever since his friend Bernie and Cuss were together, and and he not I have the much respect for him. Like I said before, he's a magnificent, a prolific fighter, and he should continue fighting. I would just love for him to give me another shot. How important was it for you tonight, Mike, to come out here and be a sportsman and behave in the ring? Oh, no, it was very but I, I said I love and respect him too much to do anything disrespectful to him, and he knows that. And for him to think that is absolutely crazy.